So as the days go on, it's become more and more abundantly clear what this leak from the Supreme Court justices is all about. Obviously, the overturning of Roe versus Wade is going to be historic. It looks like it's honestly going to happen. And now it's really obvious why this was leaked. Uh, it, it was leaked to start a firestorm because being in the minority in the Supreme Court right now, the left is pretty desperate. This is something they uphold uh, almost like as 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 like a religious doctrine, you know, the right to murder your own children. Um, you know, they're very anti-human, right? This, this is an anti-human mindset, right? To This idea of like getting rid of humans, right? Um, and that's what uh, abortion is all about. You know, it's, it's like, no, no, no. My, my bodily autonomy matters more than, than, you know, the humanity, right? right? The very essence, uh, the, the very core uh, of what it means to begin a human life, right? So, you know, they, they, they uphold that pretty high. And this was an act of desperation. Somebody within the Supreme Court, uh, probably left-leaning, leaked this, in my opinion, to cause a firestorm um, so that hopefully it can, it can get enough people pissed off and cause enough ruckus, not only in the media, but on the streets, outside the homes of these conservative justices and, you know, conservative politicians and conservative media people, etc., that, you know, hopefully it would intimidate them enough to change their minds and not rule uh, against uh, Roe versus Wade or, or, or uh, for overturning Roe versus Wade. So I think that's really what the, what the, um, intent was here but also I think a lot of this is organized and planned out from the start because as we're moving into this summer of of chaos which seems like it's going to be chaos because we have food prices at an all-time high we have gas prices at an all-time high inflation at an all-time high the S&P 500 crashing right now crypto crashing right now, housing crashing right now, while simultaneously your rents are going up. I don't know how that makes sense. Not not mine specifically, but a lot of people's are. And so this is what it's all about, right? It's all about causing chaos and, and you know, getting that order out of chaos. Uh, it, it does seem like we are entering some sort of uh, scenario of civil conflict. I'm not saying civil war per se, but some sort of civil conflict similar to what we had maybe in the 60s or, or, or worse, right? It, because in the 60s, you didn't have as bad of like an economy. And, and with people sort of starving, I guess you could say, not really. I mean, this is America. People aren't straight up starving at this point, but I'm saying like, you know, holes in their pockets, you know, and with tension so high, I think you're, you're going to see a real recipe for disaster in this country and it's not looking good. So you have this escalation of everything. I'm, we're going to go over it here. Uh, you have a group called Ruth sent us, which is uh, these abortion, pro-abortion women that dress up as Handmaid's Tale characters. Of course, all these millennial women know, all these white millennial women know is like the, the Netflix shows they watch. They don't know anything else, right? So they do that and they go up into these churches. I'll show you footage. They're going, they're going into Catholic churches, you know, intimidating people essentially. And then you also have pro-life facilities and groups being firebombed by pro-abortion activists. They're really trying to escalate the tensions here. So let's start with this article out of National Review. Pro-abortion group publicizes conservative Supreme Court justices' home addresses ahead of planned protests. This is something truly, truly evil what they're trying to do. You know why they're publishing this? Because there's probably countless uh sick psychotic creeps um that are you know mentally unstable that are willing to go to these people's homes and do bad stuff right ruth sent us plans to dispatch demonstrators to the homes of six extremist justices on wednesday may 11th that's in a couple days according to the group's website um, our six to three extremist court routinely issues rulings that hurt women, racial minorities, LGBTQ plus PL, XWZY, blah, 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 
and immigrant rights. We must rise up to force accountability using a diversity of tactics, the group adds. Do you guys know what that means, diversity of tactics? That's a dog whistle term that the left often uses. You know, these Antifa groups and these uh, Black Lives Matter types and these far left activists will use this term, diversity of tactics. What that means is violence, right? Basically, there's different types of tactics you can use to get your movement to gain traction. You can have artistic expression as a tactic, getting people to do what you want by, by emotionally coercing them or whatever the case may be. But then you have the violence tactic and the threats tactic, right? And so these are the types of things they'll say to encourage violence. When they say diversity of tactics, that means the violence is on the table. And, you know, that's part of like, it's like a dog whistle, right? You know, it's it's like code word. It's like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know, it's like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge to what they mean when they say that. You know, it's well known within many of these circles what that means. Okay, that's not like me making that up. Um, moving on in the article, the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, whose legacy Ruth sent us claims to uphold, criticized the legal reasoning underpinning Roe versus Wade throughout her career and predicted it would lead to political instability. In collaboration with Vigil for Democracy, Ruth sent us generated and posted a Google Maps graphic pinning what it claims to be the home addresses of Justices Barrett, Kavanaugh, Thomas, Alito, Gorsuch, and Roberts, where they presumably reside with their families. Vigil for Democracy titled the map Extremist Justices, adding where the six Christian fundamentalist justices issued their shadow docket rulings. The map has 3,185 views so far. That number is probably higher, obviously, now. Now, the TikTok account for Ruth Sentis seems to indicate that some marchers will silently walk by the homes of the justices wearing costumes depicted in Margaret Atwood's, uh, At Atwood's, <laughs> Atwood's novel, The Handmaid's Tale, an increasingly common tactic used by abortion proponents to claim that a row reversal represents the first step toward the creation of a dystopian patriarchal theocracy. <laughs> All that the Roe versus Wade um, uh, decision overruling um, constitutes is basically, well, the whole decision of abortion and abortion laws goes to the states instead of federal government. That's all it is. It's just a pro-state argument that, you know, but whatever. Um, so yeah, that, that's the group Ruth sent us, right? The, uh, let's see here. Here, here they are, right? And they dress as, as handmaid's tail. You can see, um, of course, all, you know, these millennial white women know is their Netflix shows. So, you know, that's what they do. They dress as the handmaid's tail characters from the show, the TV show. Most of them probably even haven't read the book that, you know, they just watch the Netflix show or whatever. Uh, you know, life is just like a Marvel movie. Life is a Netflix show. You know, there's no nuance to anything. This is the type of like, like, uh, like Disneyfication of life and politics that these idiots have, right? They don't really have any deep understanding of any political topics, right? They're just like, they're, they're like these goldfish. They just go around being doing what they're told, right? It's just, it's, it's kind of out of control. But there's a lot of violent types too, you know, and these usually aren't the white millennial women dresses the handmaid's tale. They're, they're just, you know, these are like the Antifa types. These are like the, the drug addict, you know, um, uh, socialist uh, or, or, or the Black Lives Matter activist. Um, they'll go around doing things like firebombing facilities, right? And that's what we have here. Um, and this is out of... I don't know, oh, the Epoch Times here. Um, the office of a pro-life group in Wisconsin was set on fire over the weekend in what police are describing as a targeted attack. The Wisconsin Family Action Office in Madison sustained some fire damage and was vandalized with graffiti, police officials confirmed. A Molotov cocktail was hurled 
inside the building, the Madison Police Department said in an incident report. Federal investigators are aware of what happened and are working with police and fire officials in the arson investigation. No injuries were reported. Here's some photographs of it. Um, You have more information here. Look, more photographs here. And and there's more, too. This all happened in the past couple days. This is out of Tim Cast. Pro-abortion activists vandalize pregnancy centers in Oregon and Maryland that encourage women to keep their babies. So the, we had a firebombing in Wisconsin. We have vandalism at two um, crisis pregnancy centers in Oregon and Maryland as well. And this is out of Tim Cast. CareNet of Frederick in Maryland was vandalized on Tuesday following the leaked draft opinion of the Supreme Court that would overturn Roe versus Wade. Two days later, the windows were smashed at First Images Southwest Portland Pregnancy Resource Center in Oregon. The Pregnancy Resource Center in Portland had all their windows smashed on one side of the building and anti-CPC messaging sprayed spray painted in the walls. Cirillo added that because of the nature of the crime, it is a federal offense and we are working with the police, uh, blah, blah, blah. Prior to the vandalism, an Antifa activist using the name William Gillis had posted locations of crisis pregnancy centers on Twitter. So these are, these are pro-life pregnancy centers being attacked being doxxed. Uh, of course, a lot of the addresses are public, but you know, when you have like an Antifa like account on Twitter with a lot of followers, post all the locations of like these pro-life centers. What they're saying is attack these centers, right? Diversity of tactics, let's go. And same thing with the Supreme Court justices posting their addresses, their home addresses. This is a clear escalation of tactics Pro-abortion activists claim that the crisis pregnancy centers trick women into not aborting their babies because their physicians do not offer the procedure. They trick, like, th- th- this is this is what, like, think about how evil this is. These leftists are pissed off because you have these pri- crisis pregnancy centers that all they do is say, they say, look, to these these young girls who are really propagandize and aborting their child right they say look hey you don't have to do this you can ad- you put it up for adoption you know or you can have the baby and keep it and we can you know try to support you or whatever it is right or get people to try to support you that is the most noble heroic cause i can think of like saving the lives of the unborn is literally like the most like you are getting a crown when you go to heaven let me tell you you are getting the ultimate crown of glory okay let me, let me tell you, if you're a Christ believer and you're doing this type of work, like I'm, you're saved by grace, not by work. But let me tell you, you are getting a crown up in heaven when you go to heaven, boy. Let me tell you, man. It's true. It's true. Life News reports that a second pregnancy center, CareNet of Frederick in Maryland, was also vandalized with pro-abortion graffiti Tuesday. A spokesperson for the organization told Life News. Photos posted on Twitter by an unknown person show graffiti spray painted all over the front of the building, including not real clinic and end forced motherhood. Yeah, right. Quote unquote. You can see some of the pictures here. Yeah, they hate the fact that they're saving babies lives. So you got vandalism, you got fire bombings, you got intimidation, you got graffiti. Um... We have some of the pro-abortion activists doxing people who work at some of these places. So this is this is uh, the, uh, the the very uh, epitome of evil, and it's just incident after incident here, uh, you know, being documented. And then you have this. This is really interesting. So this group, Ruth sent us, is going into Catholic churches, right, intimidating people. And starting ruckus. I mean, check this out. This is pretty. This is pretty crazy. You can see they're dressed in the red. Hey, you get off again. And this is in the middle of a Catholic mass in L.A. Get out of here, all you're not. You turn it into something else. 
keep you away from the creatures. You have to keep you away from the creatures. Yeah, so you get the gist, right? And then they get kicked out. I understand. Get it's getting it's getting heated up in here. Hey, ladies, go home and watch your Netflix. Go home and watch Netflix. Seriously. You can see here another angle. I mean, this is pretty this is pretty hot and heavy. Again, this is in um Our Lady of the Angels in Los Angeles. It's a it's a Catholic cathedral. So um yeah, you have protests uh, at Kavanaugh's, Brett Kavanaugh's home and other Supreme Court judges' homes as well. And this is from, where is it here? This is from footage from uh, at Justice Kavanaugh's home. They're protesting his home residence because these groups doxed the Supreme Court justices. And this is illegal, by the way. We get it. So this, by the way, federal statute bans picketing judges as residences with the intent of influencing the judge. That's 18 USC 1507 subsection. Um, it's literally a federal ban. You're not allowed to do this. But of course, you know, many of the politicians and the authorities just let it happen because, you know, the... the the left is just allowed to do what they want, right? There's different rules for different uh, political uh, factions. Of course, if, if you were a right winger, this would be January 6th part two, right? This, this would be a January 6th insurrection, right? If this was a right wing situation. Um, but that's not the case for the left because, you know, I guess I guess people just feel bad for them. So they just let them do what they want. I, I don't really know. I don't get like the logic behind it. Maybe because they're seen as less of a threat, you know, because when the right it really dedicates themselves to something and organizes, it becomes extremely dangerous because the right's just naturally more good at doing that. So I don't know. I don't know how true that is, but I've heard that before. Um, so that being said, uh yeah, these protests are occurring at these justices' homes. Of course, many are uh, being moved to undisclosed locations. You have this uh, rumor going around that Justice Samuel Alito was moved to an undisclosed location. I'm sure many of these justices are, but this is a, a report saying that Alito is one of them being moved to undisclosed locations now because of threats. And again, with gas prices at an all-time record high, food prices at an all-time record high, with S&P crashing, with crypto crashing, with inflation at an all-time high, tensions at an all-time high, I foresee a hot summer. A hot and heavy summer of lots of chaos and civil conflict and economic woes, food shortages. It ain't looking good. So we got to keep an eye on this. And I do think we should stand up for the unborn. But I also think a lot of this is order out of chaos, you know. I think a lot of the upper echelons of society want the disintegration of America. They want us to be divided. And they want us to be in chaos and turmoil and civil conflict. And, you know, maybe there is no way out of this. I mean, look at this crypto. Look at this, first of all. I just noticed Bitcoin at 30,600. 30, Dang. Down 10% on the day. Let me tell you, a lot of my, a lot of my bags are in altcoins, too. I'm bleeding. I'm hurting. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, but anyway, still, with all of this happening, with you know, again, and people are going to be, like, poor and hungry and pissed off, too. It's, it's just not looking good. And this is what they want. You know, I think the, we're in a lot of trouble. The next few years are going to be very, very chaotic. And, you know, I think we got to try to, I, I mean, I, I agree. We got to stand up for the unborn. You know, I'm pro-life, but I do think we got to try to extend an olive branch and somehow, somehow unite together to get through 
what's coming here, you know, and, and, and sort of put our differences aside the best we can and agree to disagree and try to, and try try to move on and, 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 and stick together as a nation, man. I don't know. Like, I do think the United States needs to break up, but at the same time, your neighbors are, are, are on the opposite sense, ideal opposite ends of the spectrum ideologically in many cases no matter where you are in the country it really doesn't matter so we really do have to come together because your own neighbors are going to be in the same boat as you financially and economically when it comes to many of our troubles ahead and we might have to try to put these differences aside you know whether or not we agree with you know murdering children in the womb um i think uh we got to somehow find find common ground here let me know what you think. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Gab. Bitch you, Odyssey, and Rumble. And here on YouTube as well if you're watching on YouTube. And if you want to support my work, I have a Patreon. You can contribute any amount, really. And it will help contribute to the channel and support my work. Um, other than that, though, it, just like, share, and subscribe. That's, you know, especially share this information. That's the best way to get this information out and help the channel. It's been Press. Keep your head up. Stay real. And no fear.